Lady Ada, okay. it's time. Yes. You ready? Show these products off as fast as you can. We are. All right, first up, it is the this little is bit the synth. This is the sequencer kit. Sequencer kit, sorry. It's not a synth, it's a sequencer. sequencer. So this is a little, um, it's, a, it's a little bit, uh, you know, accessory for the little bits sets that you already have. And what it does is allow you to basically sequence through um, eight different connections and you can like configure how fast and which ones connections are activated. Hmm. And basically it just allows you to do like, if you want like, the thing, the little bits right now is it allows you to do like motors on when the sensor's pressed or not, but it doesn't necessarily have a way for you to say like when the sensor's pressed, have the motor on for a second, then the fan on for a second, then the light on for a second. You know what I mean? Like so, this is allows you to sequence it, so you can see it can it can step through um, yeah. animations. This is like the EL add-on, so it allows you yeah. to do sequencing and stuff. Anyway, I think it's interesting because it adds a little bit of intelligence because usually it's all analog, so this is a little bit more digital. Okay. Next up, we got some power supply. Yeah, this is wow. a really big power supply. So we are um, a distributor of Regal now, and I wanted to carry some of the more useful stuff. This is a power supply that actually I use on my desk. Um, actually, mine is not as heavy duty as this. And this is, uh, shoot. DPA32. Yeah, but the, the little number's underneath. It's hard for me to read. Hold on. It's a 30-volt, uh, 3-amp. Uh, dual plus 5 volt 3 amp. Yeah, mine doesn't wow, does nice. not go that high. So basically, you can have um, 30 volts pl positive and minus, so it's floating. So you can have a positive and minus 30 volts, which is like more than you'll probably ever need. But if you ever need like 24 volts, like this is like really nice, and it can do up to 3 amps at that as well. And it's a nice quiet power supply. Um, it's not switching; it's all linear. And then there's also a 5 volt. Um, Output as well. It's also floating, and there is a ground reference, but you can, you know, you can positive minus as you need to. And it's all digital control, and has it full TFT, where you can like set the output and like digitally and everything. It's like so sweet. It's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit big, but like this is like it. This is like the nicest power supply. And I've had some kind of crummy power supplies that were like 200 bucks, and it's probably better just to get a really good one, um, especially if you're like you know really getting into power electronics or robotics. It's like such a dream to have something that can do like with digital output, so you're not like guessing, yeah. and it's like one of the things I like about uh, the Adafruit store is it's every everything is approved by Lady, picked by Lady, and she picks the things that uh, she uses and wants. And so this power supply, this is something that you use and <laughs> and would yeah. want if you didn't have. I was using this today, out, like yeah. testing like the Power Boost 1000. Like I'm like, well, I want to know how much current is being drawn, and I want it to be nice and precise. And so like yeah. I can, you know, dial in different, you know, simulate if two AA batteries simulate uh, a LiPo, put current limiting on it. It's just a really handy supply. I mean, yeah. there are less expensive supplies, but this one is is very advanced, and I think this is like finally an evolution power supplies. Mm -hmm. I like we it. tried to become a distributor it. for pink hair dye, but yeah. they're they're impossibly to hold us. Yeah, they wouldn't do and, it. And so we wanted to have that in there too. So instead of that would be really fun. Really because it'd be finally <laughs> and then we could spread out to like you could do like Mitch Altman, like because you have you always have a, yeah. a rainbow on the side. There's always Yeah new. we could do like the Mil Alt Alt Mitch Altman special. Yeah. But now they're right. doing all this. Okay. So but along instead with, we get power supplies. Along with that we also Whatever now have um, yeah. this Regal D S eleven O two E which is uh, the 100 megahertz version of the DS052, uh, which we've had for a while. This one is the 100 megahertz version. Uh, they're, you know, good. They're not crazy expensive oscilloscopes. It's like, you know, under $500. It's better than getting a used Tektronix. It's a digital storage scope. There's two channels. It's color. Mm -hmm. um, this is nicer than like the scope that I used for a very, very long time to do all my stuff at Adafruit. So this is a perfectly good oscilloscope, has like a USB key, you can control from a USB port, yeah. you can script, there's like a scripting language for it. Anyways, it's a, I think it's a very nice oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. All right. And next up, um, this is going to be a lot of fun. So the Oont. Hella Oont. The Hella Oont is cool. now released. This is the open source music controller. Um, we have Colin Cunningham here tonight. Um, this is what the kit looks like before you assemble it. It's it's an Arduino controlled. It's controlled. a monster kit. Rubber keypad grid controller, and it, the whole idea here was to make something totally open source and Arduino controlled that you could reprogram. And it looks like a raw MIDI USB device, so it actually will work with like any software in the world. Like everything yeah. can use this, any computer can use it because it just you plug into USB, it shows up as a MIDI device. It looks like any synthesizer or sequencer that you've ever used. So I thought. That made it, I think, a little bit more powerful, so you don't have to have like yeah. intermediary software. And we have the musical stylings 
Oh, Colin Cunningham. Yeah, he's the band. So Lady Ada, lean forward. Okay. Colin, <laughs> I'm gonna pan the camera over. <laughs> I'm gonna crouch. And I'm going to press buttons. And Colin's gonna press the buttons. All okay. right, Colin. And so that's the live music demo. Can you hold <laughs> up the? Uh, can you hold up? Oh, you want to hold it up, Colin? So you've got this arpeggiator demo working on it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of addictive. Okay. I, I don't really want to it looks cool too. It looks way cool. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can. Especially when you do that with your head. Oh, there he is. Oh, um, yeah, this wasn't hard to write up actually. Whoa! Really fun to Zoom write. in. Right, Here we go. Right all right, the musical stylings of Colin coming in. All right, thank you. He's like spent all, like, all week hacking on this thing. That's right. Just well, buttons, he's so. going to be doing this in our uh, weekly Adafruit meeting, so there we go. All right, thank you, Colin. So that is thank you. the oons. Okay, um, there's this little hacky panel, Lady Ada, right? What's this? What's this all about? This is the add-on for the Oons. This lets you um, Ooh, whoops, no, change over. out the um, front oh, part okay. of the Hella Oons, and you can put up to uh, four encoders and four potentiometers, or like six potentiometers and two encoders, or whatever. Basically, all these little holes for standard panel mount um, twisty things so that you can upgrade your oons to add potentiometers and encoders, which is really handy if you want to have one for volume or you want to have one for pitch or rotor encoders or change speed or whatever. So Colin actually added that for um, clock, uh, MIDI clock speed control. Okay. And this one is just a version for the use, so you can just swap it out when you make it. All right, next up, we just got these cables in. Yeah. Well, I want you to slide back on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we had these cables, uh, we announced them before, but now they actually came in. This is the downgrade cable. So this cable allows you, um, on the left side, over there, not Colin, but over there, um, is a 40-pin connector, and then the part that's under uh, Mitch is a 26-pin connector, and so it allows you to use um, stuff that was designed for the Raspberry Pi Model B with the B+, Plus because the B+, Plus has a 40-pin connector, and so you have to kind of downgrade it to 26 pin and you can't shove a 26 pin IDC into a 40 pin socket without bending pins or modification. Well, this is a kind of a more elegant way. You can if you don't mind like cutting or dremeling or whatever, but this way you don't have to damage your pie, you don't damage your cable. Okay. All right, so we also have the kind of mega 40 to 40 here, right? Yeah, we also have the standard GPIO cable. Hold on, let me um, see if I can, I have one. I have both here, yeah. So uh, this is like a standard 40-pin GPIO cable. This is for the B+. Plus. For the GPIO pins, it has a 2x20 IDC. Comes in slimming Adafruit black. White stripe is pin 1. So you can see the difference between the 26-pin and the 40-pin. So now you can use old stuff with the B+, Plus or use new stuff with the B+. Plus. Up to you. Okay. And then um, speaking of Raspberry Pi stuff, this is a big deal. This is the first and only Raspberry Pi Cap touch, capacitive touch screen. This may actually be the first uh, cap touch screen for yes, um, only. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, these phones are really, really good. So it's basically mm -hmm. the Pi TFT, but we got a custom screen made for us which has a capacitive touch controller. So the display, the TFT itself is the same. It's 320 by 240. Um, it sits on top of the Pi and it uses SPI to communicate. And you, know, you can run X11 on it. You can run Pi game. You can run SDL. We have like the Cupcade stuff for emulators. Um, but instead of resistive touch screen where you use like your fingernail or um, a stylus, instead you use the pad of your finger, just like most people are familiar with modern smartphones. They all use capacitive touch. People begged us for a very long time, get capacitive touch, get capacitive touch. Turns out it was really expensive and a pain in the ass. It actually took us like many, many months to get even this single touch screen in. Uh, and even then we had, you know, a lot of repair work and, and updates and code. Um, but we have it now and uh, it looks really great and um, we have the cap touch working and I can just show it on um, the overhead yeah. of a basic demo which was not working but then I kind of Let's try to do the same Let's see what happens. It to work. See if it works. Yeah. Hold on, let me turn this off. Can we, um, can we zoom in or point? You, you want me to zoom in? Well, actually, I can zoom in. Can you sure. focus? Sure. Just yeah. Ooh. 
That's great. Yes. So I'm just running the TSLib demo, and then um, I can just, you know, basically oh, yeah. move around, and I can do a draw, and I can draw the Adafruit <laughs> logo really poorly. <laughs> Anyways, I, I really can't draw. Um, uh, hold on. Yeah. I can draw a heart. That I can do. Yay. Um, so you don't use your fingernail. You actually use the pad of your finger instead. Um, and it and it works really well. What's nice is that you don't have to calibrate it because it's it's actually like absolute location. Um, yeah, and it works with X11. Or this is actually using uh, TSLib, which is like the low level um, control of uh, the touch screen. And it shows up just like a mouse or whatever. So it works with like any program. And yeah, we're gonna. It's a little bit more expensive because capacitive touch is more complicated than the resistive touch. Resistive touch is actually just two thin layers of plastic, and when you press them, you're actually creating a, a potentiometer. There's like little, it's like a, basically a gigantic clear potentiometer that when you press, you, you turn it into a dual pot. Um, with capacitive touch, there's like three layers of glass, and there's like a capacitive like grid, and then there's a controller chip. So it's $10 more, that's kind of the trade-off, but it has a much cooler look. Um, it has like this, uh, I'll, it's hard to see the screen, but you can see it's like a glass, black, shiny, glossy look. Um, it'll look much better than the resistive touch. You don't have like the, uh, it's much clearer too. There's more light passes through. So the display is a little bit more vivid as well. It's a nice trade off for capacitive touch. So you have this uh, custom made at a place in. Yeah, I had to have this custom made. The factory that makes this TFT, I actually had to find another factory that makes capacitive touch overlays for smartphones, actually low cost. Uh, like smartphones, not iPhones, but like, not iPhone clones either, but like, you know, low cost Android phones and such. And so I got them to kind of work together. I had to order 2000 to start and the, actually they didn't work. Um, so we actually had to uh, d d like totally do the rework. They, there's firmware on the chip and it was like they didn't test them really. Or they tested them, but they didn't test them with the TFT on. The TFT actually added enough noise that it wasn't working, but then after like three or four um, back and forth we got organized. It's just, it's just really difficult to do. Yeah, small scale it. cap touch. That's why I haven't seen any small scale capacitive touch. Yeah. But um, it's really good. It's single touch, although I'm working on getting a source for multi-touch. But okay. it's like, it was cool. hard enough to get to this point. And Linux multi-touch supports iffy, so that's why I was like, let's just do single touch, see how it goes, and then I, we can I kind of feel like we're the hobbyist ambassadors, because we, we know this cool stuff is available, but they won't talk to you unless you have a lot of units that you'll buy. So then we can bring it to if the people who want to tinker. If you are not yeah, yeah. Not, you can't go there and buy one. They're like, it, it, we have to, they have to custom make the, the Flex PCB, yeah. custom program the chip, they have to get an engineer involved. It's like, they're like, you have, to, they basically said, well, because the Pi TFT has been popular and you've bought like 10,000 Pi TFT LCDs or Vistif type, they're like, we feel like you're likely to buy as many of these capacitors, so we are willing yeah. to put in the effort. And that's one of the things when you work with factories is, um, uh, you know, working with them to sort of say like what, like also this was something they hadn't had experience with, so they were interested in learning how to do capacitive touch as well. This was like their kind of first attempt. Uh -huh. So like, so it, it helped them too. So it helped them too because the TFT factory is like, well, we don't really do capacitive, but we want to. So they kind of used me as a way of working with this other factory to make these displays that make I would, happen. I kind of wrote all the test code for, and I got it working, and then I showed them what to look for, and like back yeah. and forth. So it's a bit of an experience, so we'll hopefully get more capacitive touch okay. screens. And that was new products. All right. Oh, we also, um, it, it's not new, but we put the cobblers in. Right, sorry, the cobbler was the one thing that didn't make it into Yeah, the, it was busy, it's okay. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we, we just put them in. The, we just put them in. Like a, just a few minutes ago. Like a minute, we didn't yeah. know we would be done, so yeah. we didn't have it in the show, but the tea cobblers and the, the pie um, tea cobblers and the cobblers are in now. Okay. So.